Ladies and gentlemen, I have a problem and I don't know how to treat it. And it's the problem where I keep buying tech. So earlier today, or maybe yesterday, depending on how quick I can get this video filmed, edited, and then posted, we watched together the Google event where they announced the Pixel 5, the Pixel 4a 5G, and also the new Chromecast with Google TV, which is weird because it's not really a Chromecast anymore. It's got Chromecast functionality, but this is running Android TV, but they're calling it Google TV. Now, they like fragmenting things. It's confusing. It's strange. It came out today, September 30th. A few people managed to get lucky and find them in stores before Street Date was there. I wasn't able to do that. I, I did look. I did try. But after the event, I went online and I Googled. Suddenly, it's popping up in people's stores. It's out. Found one at my at a local Target, the second Target that I was going to check. I found one there. I bought it. Here it is. We're going to unbox it. And then I'm going to walk into the other room. I'm going to hook it up. And I'm going to give you a first impression of what I think about it when compared to the NVIDIA Shield Android TV that I currently use every day. Okay, so let's jump into this thing. So the coolest thing about this to me is that, one, it's really small. And then, two... A new, uh, a new remote. One thing I hate about the NVIDIA Shield is the remote. It's, it is just, just terrible. So if this remote is just okay, then we're gonna be, we're gonna be in great shape. Goodbye, plastic. Plastic is gone. All right. How do you open it? You open up a flap on the bottom. This is very Google packaging. Let's, uh, I mean, the tab's on that one, so we're going to open up this first. This is the actual device itself. In some sort of, ooh, that's a very soft packaging, and that, <laughs> uh, that's actually, it's actually quite satisfying. Something I was wondering about, it's, it is a, is a hard plastic. It charges, or, or it, you know, the power supply, I guess I should say, is USB type C. That is awesome. Let's set that down. Crack into the, the remote. If I can get the freaking thing out of there. There's that. There's that. And there is your remote. And there's already one thing I'm going to prefer. Just, just a volume rocker. Just a volume rocker. I don't know why, um, I don't know why the shield used this weird capacitive slidey thing, but that sucks. This is better. Home, mute, back, Google Assistant, YouTube, Netflix, power, and then I don't actually know what that icon is meant to be. I guess we'll have to find out what that is, because I don't, I don't actually know. AAA batteries, not in the box. I'm hoping they're down in here buried. Nope, they're in there. Get started guy. Who needs that, am I right? So, like I said, USB Type-C. Here is a charging brick. There's that. Neat. There are my batteries. And I think that is an empty box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this thing hooked up to my television in concurrently with the shield so I can switch back and forth. I'm going to film this. Why is the, the batteries are white and they're and they're they're textured? That is weird. I'm going to film this with my Surface Duo because it will be perfect to set up to film. I don't need a tripod or anything with that. That's what I'm gonna use, just because why not? And we're gonna see what we think about it. Alright, so we are Finishing up our update, and we are now booting for the first time into the new Google Chromecast with Google TV. Pretty cool little animation there. Now this is interesting. So it's giving you the ability to control your TV with voice commands using your remote. I'm not going to set that up for now. So while that's installing, let's go over to the Shield and I'll show you kind of what that looks like in case you don't know. This is the standard Android TV interface. You've got your row of apps up top, which you can access the rest of your apps through that icon. 
You can add apps to that row there. You've got a list of things to continue watching um, from that. And then you do have individual lists from particular apps of things that you might want to continue watching or start watching. It's pretty straightforward. You have a search up top, which can be done by voice or by keyboard. So this is the remote to the Shield, which I had talked about earlier about not being a real big fan of this thing. You control your volume by just kind of sliding up and down there. I stopped using it almost immediately and purchased this thing off of Amazon, which is just a remote with a big keyboard on the back. You flip it over and if you need to search something, you can type with your thumbs there. And it's just, it's just a standard remote. So to me, one immediate thing is that if you're comparing these two remotes with just usability, this is going to be, unless something really weird happens, a huge step up from the Shield TV's controller. You've got volume buttons, guys. Come on. Okay, so we are finally into our home screen. And boy, this is a big change in terms of the appearance. Now, it's showing... Here are a bunch of suggestions that aren't really going to mean a lot to me. Here's a cool thing. Don't know if I'm going to keep that sound on or not, but it's definitely there. So up top, you've got your For You section. This is where it's going to try and suggest things to you that are going to be on the apps that you use. YouTube TV is there. A list of the apps that you use. These are some things I've been watching on YouTube TV. Some things that are trending on Google. Now this shows HBO Max. I don't have that. That's a movie you can rent there. Netflix, Disney Plus. These are all apps that maybe you have, maybe you don't have. These Some of these here, like Sling TV. I don't have Sling TV, but it's still showing that stuff. Hopefully there's a way to turn that off. On now... And then it starts showing you just shows from all different sources, all just linked in together. Here's some YouTube stuff. It's throwing in there as well. So basically, this home screen is just showing you all kinds of stuff. Shows, movies, TV, from all different sources, some of which I don't even have. That is interesting. Let's jump over here live. That is pretty cool. So guys, we have YouTube TV integrated to the home screen. As someone who does actually use YouTube TV, that might be the killer feature. I don't even have to launch the app to see what is on. Okay, so let's just pick something that's on now and just, just watch it launch here. So it's going to fire up YouTube TV. This back. And start playing. Let's back out of that so we don't get in any kind of copyright trouble. Okay, so for you, now that I've gone in and signed in, let's see if this has changed anything. Netflix icon looks weird. Getting some weird artifacting on some of these icons, which may or may not be visible to you. HBO Max, I don't have HBO Max. Let's long press, view details, and we can uninstall that. Out the door it goes. That was pretty quick. Now let's go back home. Okay. So, will that now start giving me suggestions that are only things that I have? Weird graphical glitches still on the home screen. Hopefully that's something that a reboot will solve. It looks like now my suggestions are only on apps that I actually use. Good to see that. You've got Tomato Meter showing up down underneath the, uh, the movies. That is a pretty cool integration as well. So let's, let's roll on. So now we know that live just shows you YouTube TV. Fantastic. If you're a YouTube TV user, that is a selling factor. Movies. This is the same thing as for you. It's just showing you all these different movies that you could watch from things that you have. Now, here's one it's showing on Sling TV. I need to find a way to, to get rid of that. This is pulling from my watch list. Maybe that's why. If I manage to find out a way to make that go away, to stop showing me things that I don't I can't access, I will put that in the description. Shows, that's what you'd expect. And the apps here, it's just giving me my list of apps. Apps from other devices. That is pretty cool. If you wanna quickly say, hey, I use Curiosity Stream. Well, let's hit that up. Let's go ahead and install that. Hopefully I can now go back and keep doing what I'm doing and that'll download in the background. And it's gonna show you a snapshot of the Play Store, different apps that you might want to download. 
without having to jump into the Play Store, here's a bunch of stuff you can download. That is pretty neat. And then in the library tab, these are things that you own. I own very little when it comes to stuff like this because why would you own anything anymore? You can just stream it. Can I remove from my watch list from here? You can. So all of this stuff is right there, easy, easy to use. New in your DVR, more YouTube TV integration. And now let's try the Google Assistant button. So you have to actually press and hold it, release when you're done talking. Open YouTube. Opening YouTube. All right, that works pretty well. What about hitting the Netflix button on the remote? How quick is that jumping between YouTube over to Netflix? Relatively fast. All right, let's go back home. Well, guys, I think that's a good first impression of the new Google Chromecast with Android TV. I think it's a really interesting product, and I think it's very clearly aimed to sell you YouTube TV. If you don't have YouTube TV, this is a really weird thing for you to purchase. If you are a YouTube TV user, though, this is a lot of functionality that you might find incredibly useful. If you guys have any questions, things you want to know about this device, please do drop them in the comments down below, and I'll do my best to get to them and to let you know what I think. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends. If you enjoy my content, please consider becoming a Scary If Literal member. You'll get access to a whole bunch of emoticons to use with live streams and a shout-out on an upcoming video. Thanks, as always, for your continued support.